Hi, this is Roger from Kaika Labs. Today with another episode about vintage display technology. Uh, now today I've brought with me uh, my Nixie tube um, bar graph clock and for comparison a uh, so-called meter clock uh, built with uh, moving coil uh, meters just for comparison because they work um, or the display is due to the same principle that the time is displayed uh, with the here with the length of the bar graph and here with the uh, height of the of the dial. Uh, anyway, they operate from the same electronics. So the electronics for this one uh, I've developed myself, and a little bit later came out. Um, from a German company ELV, an electronics hobby kits um, distributor, uh, the a complete clock for these moving coil meters. Um, so I didn't want to build up the circuit twice and I bought one of the ELV kits and used my own circuit here for the Bagraph clock. Now um, let's uh, talk about a little bit about these uh, Nixie Bagraph tubes. Um, they are Russian type. Uh, this kind of Nixie tube was, uh, as far as I know, never built in the Western world, but only in uh, the former USSR. And um, they are quite unique. The, uh, the principle uh, of, of the glow is the same as with the well-known Nixie tubes. Uh, but what is absolutely unique is that you get a kind of uh, string or thread that is uh, proportional to the current you put into the control uh, anode. They work with uh, 140 volts anode voltage, so typical for Nixie tube. Um, there are two types of these uh, bar graph Nixies on the market. Uh, this one is the IN13, which I would rec recommend if you want to do your own experiments uh, with them. Uh, the other one, the IN9, um, that one has a different glow. It's not orange like the typical Nixie orange, uh, but it's more blue violent and it has much less lifetime. The lifetime of these Nixie tubes is stated as between one and two thousand hours. So that's probably on the safe side. They, I think they will last if, if properly operated uh, for 10,000 hours or more. And um, well, what's, what you will note one thing as with all my Nixie tubes I paint the glass body here with uh, glass paint just to give you more cr contrast. I even now had to dim nearly all the lights so that you can uh, see them. They are not very bright and if you don't apply either a uh, colored plastic uh, film as a contrast filter or yeah, um, orange um, orange glass paint, uh, you will not be able to to read them. And here you see the second problem. Um, the, the string or thread sometimes becomes loose and um, that's uh, even explained in the in the data sheet for the IN13 that you may not uh, change the or the rate of change of the current through the through the bar graph uh, may not exceed a certain value and you might have noticed once a minute uh, the the display changes from time to date and this change is is a little bit too fast here so the the thread or however you want to call it here becomes loose and that's a common problem many people have um, you, you have to now it has become in the next change here you, you also can see a neon light bulb, which is, which is the same uh, glow principle as with, with the Nix. This is much brighter, so they are quite dim. Um, here again, the thread has disconnected. Um, you, you have to put either in software or in hardware an artificial kind of damping of the 
change of the amplitude otherwise you will get this effect that the thread or the string disconnects from the base and you will find uh, modern uses of uh, these bar graph Nixie tubes uh, on the one side with uh, spectrum analyzers I've built my own one also with 12 of uh, these uh, ion 13 Nixie tube. The other uh, w one is uh, thermometers with a bar graph uh, thermometer. I will give you the link down below for a uh, kit from uh, German Nixie kit maker Jürgen Grau or Mr. Nixie who sells these uh, with a very beautiful acrylic uh, case and an acrylic scale. Um, well, but now let's, uh, here you even can uh, see, because this, this clock here is uh, connected to the German uh, time service and is accurately displaying the time at the moment. You can see how late it is or how early, depending on how you look upon it. Uh, the other clock also has a, a uh, I've not connected the, uh, the time signal of the time service receiver so the uh, time and date at the moment is uh, not what it's really uh, here uh, in Germany now. I didn't have the time just to set it and to find another uh, time service receiver. So that, that will be it for a first look but now let's uh, change our uh, angle of view and take a little closer look at the electronics. There's not much uh, uh, behind it but at least I will show you what's behind the wooden panel here. So as you can uh, see uh, this is a kind of a prototype uh, stage but as with many prototypes uh, when it works a prototype becomes uh, permanent so there's not very much to see. We have a little 80 mega uh, processor microcontroller Three push, push buttons for setting. Here is the programming header. What you cannot see very well, this is here the uh, high voltage module. Uh, this is an extremely versatile module um, sold from Taylor Edge. Uh, I will give you the link down below. Uh, I think he's Joe or John Taylor, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, he's uh, one of the gurus in the, in the Nixie community. And I will also give you the link if you are interested in more details or uh, need assistance or help to the uh, Neo Nixie uh, Google group where all the gurus uh, are present. So, and uh, the only analog electronics is a Quad LM324 uh, op amp uh, that is simply used for uh, converting the uh, the PWM uh, outputs from the microcontroller to the uh, current um, constant current uh, source that you need because uh, you can if you really want a linear display you have to uh, convert voltage to a constant current uh, because otherwise uh, the the display does not behave very well there are three little uh, trim pots here for adjusting the scale. There is also a software um, software adjustment of the scale factor for the individual uh, bar graph tubes. Uh, also um, reachable with the push buttons in set mode. And well, that was it. You still have connection for the uh, time service receiver, which is here DCF77 in Germany standing for 77.5 kilohertz in the long wave range where our time signal is broadcast in digital form. And that was it. So you see, uh, you don't need very much to, to drive them. A microcontroller, a quad op amp, a few passive components and a high voltage source for the 140 volts uh, anode voltage. And now let's uh, change to the uh, to the kit from ELV uh, which uh, operates nearly uh, after the same principle. Here in Germany we have a saying uh, two stupids one idea so they uh, nearly at the same time when I had my uh, clock here ready they came out with this uh, with this uh, kit here 
and uh, I'll just have to change the focus and I will we'll take a look at the uh, ELV kit for the uh, moving coil meter clock. Uh, so this is the readily built uh, kit from ELV. Um, as you can see inside uh, there's uh, not very much. We have our time code receiver. It's nice that it's integrated here uh, into the clock. The uh, microcontroller is, I think, on the on the uh, lower side of the PCB, so not visible at the moment. Uh, you have three push buttons for the configuration where you can set the, the scale factor. Here the little LED is blinking uh, in the, with the pulses of the German uh, time service when it's correctly received and as you can see even Though uh, we have many switch mode power supplies here nearby, we get a um, uh, um, decent reception here. And uh, two op amps, um, so they took uh, just dual op amps instead of my um, quad op amp. And here you can set the uh, scale factors manually. I had to, as you perhaps can see, there is some little botch wires by me because I had to um, um, make a little uh, change to the circuit uh, to, to really drive correctly here these uh, moving coils. Well, they are not in focus at the moment. The moving coil um, meters here. Uh, you can print, or I have uh, printed the, the uh, scales here for seconds, minutes and hours uh, by myself. So there are programs on the internet where you can create your own uh, scale. And uh, the, the hardest thing uh, is just to get nice uh, moving coil meters uh, for a, a meter clock. So, and there is uh, not very much to see. Let me again reposition and refocus. Um, except for a 5 volt uh, voltage regulator, a fuse, uh, there is nothing more. Um, some clamps here for the connection to the meter. And sadly, as is very often the case with ELV kits, they have beautiful kits, uh, but they go quite quickly out of... Um, you can't get, get, it, get them anymore and they are not open source. So neither the PCB nor the um, uh, nor the firmware for the microcontroller is open source. Uh, there's a little uh, coin cell here, so it has a real-time clock just to uh, just to bridge the time. If you either have no reception of the German uh, time code. Uh, or you uh, disconnect uh, power so that the, uh, the, uh, the, the microcontroller can keep the time with, with its internal real-time clock. So a nice kit, a nice acrylic, or in this case I think it's polycarbonate uh, case, but sadly the case is still available. I've just looked it up, but the, the kit is no longer available. Um, anyway, there are a lot of uh, circuits you can find um, on the internet if you search for simply for meter clock. I will give you one or two links to the ones that did inspire uh, my own meter clock. Um, so that was it for today for a short look at especially the strange Nixie bar graphs. And uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. And that was it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.